Welcome back once again to the Imaginary Gallery. It's TJ here. And we're at the gay world of narcissism. And uh, I was initially planning on making one whole video, but realized with the notes I made that it's way too much to cram into one video. So I believe this will be a two-part, a two-parter. So the first part is just a piece of advice I picked up along the way of this beautiful road of life. <laughs> and what it has to do with is in dating situations, which I'm sure this may apply to other types of relationships, but it's specifically geared towards the gays. Because, look at it, gays don't have a June Cleaver or Ward Cleaver role model to look up to. There is no precedent to live up to. It's just like uh, free, freelance, do whatever you want. There is no guideline to follow. So this first part is going to relate to the second part. But the first part is with gays and their state that they're in. You're somewhere in public. You see some beautiful, hot thing that you feel lust for. And it, imagine what it would be like to be with that person intimately. And you go talk to it, and then the person tells you something like, Oh, well, I have a boyfriend, but you're hot. Well, that can happen happened with me. I used to work in this building with several different people and there was this younger gay there and he would say, oh, I'm in love. I've fallen in love. And I was like, you did? And I'd say, who with whom? And he'd tell me this person's name and I'd say, okay, well, what's going on then? And the answer was, oh, well, he has a boyfriend already, but I'm going to break them up. I want him. I'm in love with him. And I listened to this thinking, this is a child who doesn't know the ways of the world yet because I heard this and I said you're going to break them up and take the one you love and he said yes and I thought uh okay and then he said the only reason he's with his boyfriend is because his boyfriend is paying for his schooling and I was like okay and so I again looked at real life examples of situations I've encountered. So I said to him, it's like, oh really? So, so what happens then if you do steal him away from his partner who's paying his college dues? What happens down the road when some other young kid just like you comes along and wants to take him away from you? And his answer was, oh, that would never happen because I would satisfy his every need. And I thought, you're either retarded clueless or <laughs> other, but it's like, no, because I've learned, I've watched. These people, here's the way it normally happens. These gays are insecure, so they don't want, a lot of them don't want to be on their own, so they've got to have someone at all times to give them that supply. Well, so many of them, I've noticed, will not ever be alone, like I've done for years, and get uh, happiness out of, but they will not. They have to be constantly with someone. So even if they're miserable, they'll stick around with this one as they court out the next one to then switch. Well, what a lot of these young gays don't realize is, like the example I just gave, they met that person who's just so beautiful, their eyes and their chest are so hot, and they really want it, and they find out it has a partner already, but the person says, oh, well, I'm thinking of breaking up with my partner. Well, that gives them all this thrill, and they think, wow, I must be so special. He's going to leave his partner for me. Oh, I'm on top of the world. And they think they've achieved some wonderful thing. But what I've learned is that if that's the case, this person they're chasing is basically showing them what he does, which is maintain a partner until another one comes along and then switches. And of course, this 
gay is so enthralled and so in ecstasy of how beautiful this person is, he is tempted to think, wow, I must be the exception. He's got a partner and he's going to leave it for me? Oh, and they think it's some kind of victory. And my warning is, uh, yeah, right, we'll be prepared for that same thing to happen to you down the road once you become inconvenient or once someone else comes along just like you're coming along. But see, these younger kids don't understand that. They think that, wow, I'm so lucky. How would this ever happen? It must be fate. And no, it's, it's history repeating itself. Because a lot of us seem to think if we meet somebody new, we brainwash ourselves into thinking that, wow, I just met this person. Well, the day I met them is the day they became into existence. And that's not the case. They have a whole history behind them. And chances are, if you, if this couple is to work out, at least in the beginning, chances are the hot stud isn't going to reveal, oh yes, my last three relationships, I had this one, then I went to that one, and then I went to this one, and they won't tell all that, because that's just giving away their modus operandi, so that is just um, a tip. So if you meet somebody who's already spoken for, and they're flirting with you and love bombing you and telling you how wonderful you are and how you listen way better than the partner does, don't buy it because those same lines will be used on someone else in the very near future. Take it from me, it always happens.